A very old Stuart S50 steam plant part 26, making a chimney condenser. But first of all, here's the aftermath of the steam test. There's been some burning of the paint, so we'll have to address this by fitting some internal heat resistant material. Have a look at the brickwork at the top of the boiler. It actually looks much more real than the painted in brickwork below. The paint in this area is firmly stuck to the boiler. By way of an experiment, I'm just going to paint over it with some more primer. This episode is about building a chimney condenser. In this clip, I'm squaring up the end of a piece of metal in the three-jaw chuck of my Boxford lathe. And what kind of metal is this? It's some that are found in a box, and it's a very strange colour. It's not brass, and it's not phosphor bronze. It is called alum bronze. And it's really horrible stuff. This is terrible stuff to machine for me. I once used some alum bronze for making axle boxes, and as a bearing surface, it was good. This stuff is exactly the same, it machines in the same way, but it's not too bad because the cutting tool is very sharp, so it's making short work of the machining operation. But the job would become much more difficult if the cutting tool was blunt. So what am I making? I'm making a plug for the base of the chimney. The chimney is not a tight fit on this piece of metal, and I don't want it to be. I'm going to use a couple of O-rings to locate it. Originally, the ring around the chimney was riveted to the tube, and therefore it wouldn't fit on the piece of metal, but in the last clip, once I ground off the rivets on the inside of the tube, it fitted perfectly on the piece of metal. Let the drilling operation commence, first of all with a centre drill, followed by a drill that's far too big, and as you can see it's wobbling about, but it's not a big problem, because this is not a precision part. You can see how much heat's been generated, the part is smoking. Just one of the joys of machining alum bronze in the home workshop without any coolant. The next part of the job is to use a parting tool to make a groove to take the o-rings. I'm actually going to put two grooves in for two o-rings. And at the moment I'm using a parting tool that's a bit thin, mainly because I can't find my other one. Maybe it's in the box of bits that I've just taken over to my new workshop. The thin parting tool that I'm using will be fine for this job. I just need to take multiple cuts. After finishing machining the first groove, I'm going to use a file to remove the sharp edges just so it doesn't cut the o-ring that I'm going to fit here. In this clip you can see that I've fitted the first o-ring somewhat prematurely. Now I've machined the other groove, I'm removing the sharp edges from that. Once again I'm using the file to remove some more sharp edges on the piece of metal. And here I'm fitting the second o-ring. If this was a piston I wouldn't do it this way, I would clean up the part before I fitted the o-ring, but this is a very simple part that's just going to fit inside the chimney. And as you can see here, the chimney is a good fit. I need to move it into the right position, and eventually I'll be drilling a hole in the piece of metal to take the water outlet. At this stage, a lot of viewers will be thinking, well, what am I actually making? I've done it this way just to keep you guessing. So in case you're not sure, I'll tell you now. I'm making the bottom part of a water tank. The main water tank will be the chimney. And that's why I'm using the two O-rings to stop the water leaking out. This is a plug that will fit into the bottom of the chimney, I've drilled a hole in the bottom of the plug, tapping size for 5 16 by 32 threads per inch, and in this clip I'm threading the hole using a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch tap. Although I didn't bother showing the next part of the operation, I drilled a hole from the outside of the plug to the inside of the plug, and I'm threading this using a quarter by 40 threads per inch tap. And that's it, the plug for the chimney base is completed. If I loosely put it together, you should get some idea. This is the bottom plug, which will have a silver soldered pipe in it. And then once the part is pushed into the chimney, and as you can see, it's quite a tight fit, so it should be waterproof. Once I line it up with the hole that I've drilled and threaded, I can screw in a quarter by 40 threads per inch union. Once this is done, I can sit the chimney back in the original hole in the casing, and the union in the side of the chimney will face backwards. To complete the job, first of all, I remove the bottom fitting and put it in the three-jaw chuck to drill a 3 16ths of an inch diameter hole in it. Not all the way through, just a little way down. Then I silver sold a 6 inch length of 3 16 pipe into the fitting, and here I'm fitting the fitting to the base of the chimney plug. This time I'm using a copper washer to make sure that it seals properly. This part of the plug will accept the steam pipe from the engine's exhaust. Here's the theory of operation. The exhaust steam travels up the pipe where it comes out of the chimney as steam, but some of it is water, and that runs down the inside of the chimney 
and will eventually fill up the chimney, but it won't because it has a drain pipe on it which will be fitted to the fitting sticking out of the chimney at right angles. Simple, very easy to use and very effective, just like a girlfriend I used to know many years ago. I would like to say that this arrangement is only suitable for certain types of boilers, mainly the Babcock type. I suppose I could make a tank that sat inside the chimney that didn't touch the sides, and that way the products of combustion could still escape from the chimney on other types of boilers where the chimney is essential. At the beginning of this video I showed the damage that had been caused to the paint on the outer part of the boiler casing by the heat of the fire, and I couldn't help but notice that the bricks suddenly looked much more authentic, but anyway what I'm going to do is temporarily just give them a coat of primer again, then I'm going to fit some thermal insulation on the inside of the boiler casing and see what happens on the second steam test. But after the coat of paint, the bricks look more like real bricks than they did originally. This may look okay, I'll find out shortly, after the paint's had a few days to dry. The next part of the job is to pipe the exhaust to the chimney. But that's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.